This is the second video that I'm releasing in this manner, thanks to my microphone making me sound like a cartoon character. So like my review on the precinct, my thoughts on permafrost are going to be collated in another commentary style review rather than a live gameplay reaction. Now, with this one, I may veer off topic slightly once we get into things, but you'll see why once we do. But effectively, Permafrost is another game to add to the long list of survival action adventure titles that we've seen in recent years. Each one of these games seems to have a certain trope attached to it, a theme that they aim for to try and separate it from the crowd. With Permafrost, the clue is sort of in the name, but we are attempting to survive a harsh, unforgiving, perpetual winter climate. Now, for anybody that has played this type of game, you will not be surprised to know that all of the mechanics that you would expect to see are included here. Exploration, hunting, crafting, resource gathering, building, skills and progression, as well as the usual health, hunger, stamina and tiredness gauges that you have to manage. In 2024, we are in an age of game development where it is either difficult to stand out from the crowd or they just flat out don't bother trying and simply take mechanics they've seen from other games, tweaking them ever so slightly and then rebranding it as their own game. We have seen numerous examples recently in the AAA space, but actually I feel like this particular genre of games is one of the worst for flavor of the month style releases where a new game comes out and uses all of the buzzwords you would expect to see with a game like this, such as deep survival mechanics or survive a harsh climate. But the reality is often far from what is described. Now, before I go any deeper into not only the issues I had with this game when I played it, but also some comparisons that I found, it's worth noting that I did complete the survey for the game when prompted after I finished playing, and nothing that I'm about to say in this review hasn't been communicated via that method by myself. I think it is important to offer feedback to the developers so that they can prove even if it is largely negative slash constructive and what they choose to do with that feedback is of course entirely down to them. So let's delve into this game in particular and first let's talk about my general first impressions having played about an hour or so of this demo. Now the two things that are immediately sprung into view is the slightly up and down frame rate which I could live with given that this is a demo my rig is not exactly top of the range these days and the second is the setting. I knew before going into this of course that it was set in the harsh winter climate as we mentioned and would therefore have a lot of snow and overall I think that the world design and the graphics are pretty reasonable. It's obviously very bright in places but it conveyed the harshness of the environment pretty well in the beginning. Leaving a trail in the snow behind you as you walked is a nice touch so so far so good. Then we encounter an NPC, the same one who seemed to save us during the incredibly short opening cutscene. All of the voice acting in this game is AI driven. Now, AI technology has come a long way in a fairly short space of time, but it would appear that nobody told these developers that. He looked like a fighter to me, and it seems I was right. I cannot begin to tell you how bad the voice acting and the general interaction with the NPCs is in this game. I'm Robin, by the way. I'm here on a lookout duty. Sheriff's orders. Speaking of the devil, I'm picking up some transmission. This is Ethan Kane. Hope you can hear me, Robin team went missing. You must send someone to help me find them. It is absolutely horrible. The dialogue menu is quite slow and the actual dialogue itself is meaningless and tedious, made worse by the awful delivery from the AI. During this first interaction we are tasked with scavenging and crafting a few bits and it's worth noting that there was no tutorial in terms of how to do it. But I was able to draw upon my experience of playing these types of games as well as using some of the on-screen shortcuts and prompts to get done what I needed to. Moving further into this game, we encounter more NPCs, including this dog. <laughs> now, I'm fairly certain that he was supposed to become a companion, but due to the fact that half of his body was sticking out the side of a building, I'm not sure if the game just bugged out or perhaps whether he was meant to become a pet later in the game. We build a small shack and encounter the fairly unintuitive and confusing menu system for crafting a building, which often left me clicking the wrong buttons to go between menus or cancelling an action. And then we head down to a church to go meet some traders. On the way, we encountered this small weather anomaly, a very small area, no bigger than I would say around 100 square meters. It was around 40 to 50 degrees centigrade colder than it was outside of that area. I... Uh... I could not for the life of me work out what the reason for this tiny area to be so dangerously cold. It made absolutely no sense other than adding a little bit of a risk factor while she tried to loot the containers and boxes that resided within it. But as soon as you walked outside of that area, things returned to normal and you stopped taking damage. It was utterly bizarre and I've come to no logical conclusion as to why it would be there. 
And once we get to the church, we're introduced to three more traders who all have their own AI voices that are just as bland and uninteresting as the previous ones we've already met. They each offer their wares, and again, it's fairly run-of-the-mill stuff, with one of them being a weapon trader, one of them being a doctor selling medical items, and the other one being a general-style trader who houses a bit of everything. The UI for the trading, I'll be honest, I don't think is very good. It's clunky to split items, and there is no confirmation button when making a trade. So when I attempted to sell a whole load of loot to the trader, I assumed that when I put the stuff in the trade menu and clicked OK with without attempting to trade any of the items the other way, that I would naturally just get some money in return. It turns out that you have to select money in the trader's inventory to get the money for the items that you are selling. So unfortunately, I ended up making a very kind donation to the general trader and his stockpile. It was at this point that I completely lost interest in this game and decided to halt my time with it there. I had experienced enough to know that even with a few extra mechanics and an extra bit of story, if you can call it that, it was not going to win me around. This was in truth my first really bad experience with AI voice acting in a video game. Because of that, the game had absolutely no soul or life. If you're going to rely on NPCs to push the story forward, you have to do a better job with their lines than this. For me, it's absolutely unforgivable to be this lazy with the development of your game. As soon as I started talking to them, I completely became detracted and disassociated with this game. Add to that that the animations are pretty damn basic in this game, and the building mechanics are also just at the same level that we've seen in multiple other games. And it is on that point that I wish to share my biggest frustration with this game. As a general rule, games within this genre tend to fall within one of three subcategories. A hardcore survival simulation, a narrative heavy experience with some survival mechanics or a sandbox style game where you can craft and build whatever your brain can come up with. There is of course some crossover here and there but by and large each game has one core pillar that they focus on and build their game around. I would love to ask the developers which one of these three they think this game sits in because for me it's almost like they're trying to do all three but they're falling short by some distance on all three of those subcategories. There is an absolute plethora of choices now within this category. Just look at how many games there are now, and every one of the ones that I'm flashing up on the screen now sits within this genre and has one or two of those core pillars nailed down and offers the player a good experience. Some of the games are quite similar, with so many being truly set apart in theme and setting, but by and large, they all stand on their own two feet as different experiences for the gamer. Permafrost does not stand on its own two feet in any way, shape or form. I actually said to the developers in my feedback that I felt like there was a decent base to build from within this game, but in hindsight, I'm not sure that there is. It feels like they've taken certain aspects from certain games and just thrown them together. Just to use one example outside of the ones you have probably already drawn yourself, the way the characters move and feel in this game, it feels so much like DayZ. There's one particular frustration of mine that really grinded my gears throughout my entire time with this, and it's the fact that you can hear your character heavy breathing at every single moment in this game, even when he's standing still. I'm scratching my head for a reason to be positive here, but I honestly cannot find one. There is no single redeeming quality that I can talk about to suggest that Permafrost has a future, especially when I could suggest you go and play Sons of the Forest, Subnautica, Green Hell, Planet Crafter, or Project Zomboid, which are all vastly superior games to this that offer so much more in comparison. I don't like making wholly negative videos about games, but too often I see games that are being made that are just lazy rehashes of games that already exist, where developers perhaps are just trying to cash in on a popular trend. I would love to be proved wrong with Permafrost and see them make sweeping changes to improve the game. If that happens, I will happily change my opinion and congratulate them, but I do think it incredibly unlikely that this game is going to alter its course too dramatically. This one, I suspect, is going to get buried under the mountains of snow depicted in the game, so let me know your thoughts down below. If you have played it, let me know if I'm being too harsh on this one, and leave a like, hit the sub, ring the notification bell, and I'll see you all on the next one.